Hey guys, this video is sponsored by ButcherBox. We'll talk about them a little bit later, but first, let's get started on this project. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I welded this large propane burner to heat up a 55 gallon barrel of water. Stay tuned at the end of the video where I'm gonna show you guys how this works and also how long it takes to heat up this giant barrel of water. I'm using one by one square metal tubing and I'll put links to everything that I'm using here from Materialist to the equipment and then check back in a few weeks because I'm going to post plans of this build on our website. And you can find all those links down below in the show notes. Since this was my first welding project, my dad was in town this week and he gave me basically a crash course on how to get started, how to get going on this build. And about an hour of practicing, I was ready to start this build and build it for real. The best thing to do I found when building something with metal is using a lots of clamps and also magnetic clamps are very helpful. My main concern here is that I really wanted it to be square. I was really worried that it would not be square after I welded everything together, but with the help of these clamps, that helped me get this pretty square. This base I'm building, I'm first building two sides. I'm putting together one side and then another side, and then I'll be joining them together with a piece of metal to make it a square base to hold the metal barrel. I'm probably overdoing it with the welds, but I figured, you know, I have the welder out. This is my first welding project. Might as well just practice and just keep going at it, and all four sides are welded. Um, Otherwise, you could probably just tack weld little spots around the tubing, but I figured it's all practice for me. Fifty-five gallon barrels of water weighs close to 500 pounds. So knowing that, I wanted to brace the corners here with these diagonal pieces. Uh, so that way, just to give it some more support, the last thing I need is for this whole thing to, to crash on me. Um, and also, I figured I only need to build this burner one time, and it should outlast me for a very long time. Now I needed to build a box using some of this flat bar. Now this box is going to mount all around the actual burner and this is really just a wind block to help with the wind if it's super windy on a certain day uh, so that way it won't blow out any of the flames. And also it's going to hold the burner in place. Surprisingly, after I was done with this box, it was actually square. Throughout this build, after I welded all the corners and what I needed to, I made sure I hit it with a grinder to smooth out all of my welds. To attach this box, I'm using some flat bar and just bending it by hand and then making my own kind of corner bracket from it so that way I can attach the box to the main frame.
and then welding each corner bracket to each corner of that square box. Before we finish up this burner, let me talk to you guys about this video's sponsor, ButcherBox. This video is sponsored by ButcherBox and they just sent us a box of meat. It's still frozen? Still frozen and today's a really hot day. <laughs> Grass-fed beef ribeye steak. Yep. ButcherBox is a company that delivers high quality meat to your front door. Right now they're doing a promo through October 15th where they're giving out free ground beef for the life of your membership. That's one pack of grass-fed ground beef free in every box. Also they have chicken, seafood, pork. We're cooking the butcher box pork ribs right there guys. Look at that. All conveniently delivered to your doorstep. I'll leave the link down below to the butcher box and their high quality meats. Now let's finish up this build. After those brackets were welded on, on each corner, I cut off all the excess pieces that were sticking out and then I also grinded down any uh, rough edges from the welder. Here I just took my time and measured the middle of the base because I needed this square to fit right in the middle and I also needed it to be kind of um, a diamond shape. So it couldn't be like a perfect square, just the way the burner was mounted on there. It had to be kind of diagonal shape. And so I just took my time, used clamps, and measured out exactly where I wanted it. This middle box almost looks like it's kind of floating right in the middle. But it's not, of course, it's, it's attached, it's welded on with those uh, metal brackets. Now for the burner, I wanted to sit a little bit... It sunk in inside that box. I didn't want it directly, I guess, on the side of the box. I wanted it mounted underneath it, kind of. So, using some flat bar pieces that I had, I cut off little brackets, and, and this is what I'm going to screw on the burner to. First, I'm going to drill some holes, and this is where the screws are going to mount to, and then I'm going to screw it to the burner. This is a 10 inch burner. It's bigger than your average size burner. I'll leave a link down below where you can purchase this. And it also includes all the hoses and connectors to hook up the burner. After I mounted these metal pieces on the burner, because the burner is kind of heavy. I placed the burner right on top where I wanted to weld those pieces on. So I just placed it on top and then I used some more clamps to hold it down in place and then I welded it in place. I tack welded it just enough to hold the whole burner in place and so it won't move. And then after that I unscrewed the burner, took that off and then I finished welding all those brackets. And then I installed the burner back on to see how it looked and it came out awesome. I love the way the natural metal looks, but in order to keep it a little bit more weatherproof, I painted it with some high heat spray paint. You know, spray paint that you would use for barbecues. The spray paint actually gave it a really nice professional look. I lo I'm loving how this turned out, guys. Um, my first welding project and it came out square, it came out level. And the only thing left to do was to test it out and see how it works. And also to see if it'll hold 
a 55 gallon barrel and how long does it take to heat up a 55 gallon barrel of water so let's check it out All right, we filled this up. Filled it up to about right there. Now let's see if this thing works. Yeah. I'm gonna put this lid on it. Just a little bit like that. And then we're gonna come back and check and see how long it takes. All right, it's been, it's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna stir this around a little bit to evenly distribute some of that heat. It's getting hot though, it's starting to steam up. It's just above 100, so we have some time on here. We need to get this thing up to about, just under 150, about 147 degrees. We're gonna check back on here later. All right, it's about 20 minutes later. So we're looking at about an hour 15 or so. We're at about 150, and this is where we want this water. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That took that was that was quick considering this is a big pot of water. And I welded that. All handmade. Love it. <laughs>